Hi, welcome to the BA Brew. I'm Jonathan. I'm Sam. And I'm Mike. Today, we're going to talk about lifelong learning and um, what it means for us as business analysis professionals. Um, this is a subject that Sam has contacted us and suggested uh, that we include in the pod. Um, Sam, why have you got a passion for lifelong learning? Why, why do you think this would be a good subject for us to talk about on the brew? Yeah, so thanks, thanks for uh, including me, first of all, Jonathan, Mike. So um, I guess lifelong learning for me is really important. It, it's something that me to, to work and fulfilled my, um, my career and my life um, a lot. Um, I guess I, throughout my career, I started to learn stuff and then start to share that knowledge. And actually then by sharing that knowledge, I actually loved sharing it as well. So it's made me want to learn even more. So I think lifelong learning is one of those things for me that um, really enhances that, that, that career um, fulfillment. So I thought it would be a good thing to talk about. And and we agree, obviously, we think it's a great subject for us to discuss on the pod. And um, I thought I was passionate about lifelong learning until I met you and your description of the stories around how you've um, been self-motivated and self-organised to ensure that you've got training and, and, con and, and support. Um, can you just give a little bit of insight in terms of, of um, how you've how you funded your own training and development over the years? Yeah, so um, a lot of my um, a, lot, a lot of my training and development's been self funded. Um, that there, there, there was a, li a little award that I won uh, at, at a previous company, which funded some of it, which was great. Actually, I, I won that for um, supporting the learning of, of other people. So. That, yeah, kind of comes back to what I was saying about when you learn and you share, and then you you kind of want to do a little bit more about uh, about learning, so you can share even more. Um, so yeah, it's all it, it it's all very much been self invested, I think on on the on the main. Hmm. Mike, what are your thoughts on this as a as a subject? Lifelong learning is it something that you you yeah, talk much about? I I think so, and I I really like Sam's point about sharing because actually the sharing of your learning is a really good way for ensuring you understand stuff because you can't share stuff if you don't understand it very well. And then you get comments back and questions around it, which again, boost your learning. So it's, it's kind of a bit of a virtuous circle there. The other thing I was thinking as well is that um, we, we're working within change and we, we, we tell people that change is inevitable. So if change is inevitable, then surely lifelong learning is inevitable. Otherwise we get left behind. So there's a, just an idea there potentially. Yeah, I like I like the idea of um, sharing it as well. I think if you if you really understand something, you should be able to share it and explain it in simple terms for anyone else to be able to understand. And if if you can't do that, maybe you don't understand it as well as you might think. You can't explain it in simple terms to help someone else understand. And 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 I agree. There's a there's there is a circle. The questions that you get asked as you're trying to coach or mentor someone through something. I think um, it's really key for your own learning. And the other thing that I'd, I'd like to throw in is, is reflection. And not just reflection of formal learning activity. I, I think, I'm thinking of reflection on life events and reflection on how you are and, and self-awareness. And reflection, um, I think, is really key for you uh, being a lifelong learner. Um, have, you, have you thought about reflection in, and, and how it's helped you, Sam, at all? Um, yeah, I think I think so because I think it comes back to that, and you almost nailed an Einstein quote there about um, if you don't stand it simply enough, you um, enough to teach it, then you don't understand it. Or um, well, it's words to that effect, isn't it? I think. Right. But I think yeah, reflecting is is a really important thing because I think it enables you to refine your knowledge on the subject very much. For me, um, yeah, I, I my, my kind of story, if you like, is I I'm a uni dropout, and I'm quite proud of that now. But at the time, I think I wasn't. I wasn't quite quite so proud. So, um, so I, when I when I dropped out of uni, not not kind of knowing what to to do as a career, I ended up falling into business analysis. And quite okay, quite luckily, um, there was um, a few um, good strong mentors that were that the first company that I worked for that, that kind of started that, that that hunger, if you like, for learning. And I think it was very much that I, I then learned that actually by sharing, you can learn. Um, you can make sure that you've learned it well enough. Um, but that, that feedback loop, that, that reflection, and then people saying, well, okay, tried this, I don't know, let's say it's a technique, 
I've tried this new technique out that you shared with me. And actually I found this. And being able to reflect on that and then build that allows, I think, us as BAs to be able to flex the technique or the framework to different contexts. Really important because I think from our roles, you know, we can do analysis, do the same sort of set of techniques, if you like, in a, uh, in a, in a, in a team chain or a team process. Um, again and again, but, but actually it always changes on the context. Yeah. So yeah. learning and getting that feedback and that reflection from it is important. Yeah, I think um, I, I echo that, um, feedback really key. And, and I'd also like to say that you know, in my own career, mentors that have helped me, have I, I've been inspired, I've seen things from different angles, I've, I've identified strengths that I didn't know I had, I've identified weaknesses through, through that feedback from, from a mentor. And I think the power of mentoring, I think is undervalued and um, it's, it's often maybe mentioned, but not, not maybe thought of it as the level of gravitas that I think it should have, because uh, a, a high quality mentoring relationship, I think, can, can have such a massive impact on your learning and your career, your career potential. And it's certainly, I'd certainly say it has had that impact on my own career. Mike, have you been blessed with um, mentors that have helped you throughout your career? Yeah, and I think, um, well, prior to sort of moving into business analysis, that's been true as well. I, I too, am a, a proud university dropout. I, I failed a, or left a, a biology and chemistry course um, many years ago um, because it just wasn't right for me. Um, but that, I, I then ended up working in a chemistry lab, but I was inspired by somebody who was working in IT. He was, I think he was 70 at the time, and he got into computing at the age of 50, and learned it all and ended up writing um, a, a database management system that was eventually bought by HP. And this guy just inspired me to get into it. And I kind of worked my way through computing and it sort of keyed me up into learning again. So I, I having put the university thing behind me, I did various training. I then did a part-time master's degree on the back of my experience working in IT um, with this guy for a number of years. And then more recently, um, I say more recently, it's, it's a few years ago now, I did a, a part-time open university degree to make sure I got the bachelor's degree. So I filled in the gap, which was only what about four years ago I completed it. Um, so I've kind of I've kind of get, kept going with that. And yeah, I think I, I, there's, there's been the big courses, so doing those, the masters and the BSc, but then there's been these shorter courses. But I'm also in, interested in this sort of micro learning as well, just learning little bits. So I have interest in so many different things. Anybody who's talked to me won't, for more than a few minutes, will have heard about beekeeping or jam making or um, alcoholic uh, flavoured gins and vodkas. And I do all sorts of things. And I think that micro learning is quite good because you kind of get some cross fertilization and some sharing of ideas between that, those, those different areas. Yeah, and I'd agree those, those kind of life experiences that you have and, and interests outside of the change profession and, and business analysis, just looking at, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe a sports team that you follow and, and, and looking at why they're, why they're achieving as a team or not achieving as a team and, and the decision making processes that are perhaps going on and um, my son plays nine aside football. And I'm, I'm constantly watching to see how it is that the coaches develop and mentor the players and, and, and what the relationships are and how the maybe feedback's given, mistakes are corrected and worked on, uh, repetition, uh, lot, lots and lots of habit building in a successful football team, habits of doing things repeatedly. And, it, and it's kind of, that, that maybe isn't, it's definitely not formal learning. Um, what I found... Um, later in my career I've moved away from the formal learning a little bit um, towards self-directed learning so the way that I learn now is predominantly through things like audiobooks and um, audiobooks are my main vehicle I'd suggest in terms of of in gaining insight into new areas and um, exploring different theories and concepts but then also discussing it with like-minded colleagues such as yourselves that, that's how I, I think my, my learning approach has, has changed from doing the structured and formal learning. I should add, I did a part-time master's. I did an MBA. And uh, the effort to do the MBA uh, whilst working as a full-time consultant 
and being a recently recently married and um, recently became a new dad, it, it was it was so difficult, but so worthwhile as well. But it's it's um, a different type of learning that I think I, I've got at, the, at this stage in my career um, relative to say in the early stages of my career, and, and I'm I'm quite comfortable with it as well. But I'm, I'm still passionate about it, but not not in the same way as maybe it would have been um, to an early. I don't know, a 20-year-old Jonathan would have would have had a very different view on learning rather than audio books. It would have been something else that I would have been wanting to do or, or look at. I, I feel an old man comment coming on here. Obviously, <laughs> audio books, what, what are they? Uh, I'm, I'm very much traditional in, in, in having sort of real books that you can grab hold of. Uh, and I've got a huge pile, having had various discussions over the time I've been within, within Assist and with various other people. I bought so many books. I don't know when, I think I've got lifelong learning just in the, the pile of books I've got to read through. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, do you, do you use books um, to supplement your learning? I I'm, um, I must be an old man, Mike, because for me, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's reading books. Um, I haven't quite yet got into audio books, although the appeal is there, I think, to be able to do with the things at the same time. I, I suppose um, what, what I've got instead of audio books is listening to podcasts. So, wow. um, when, uh, when when we initially had a chat about this podcast, I didn't realise it was a video podcast as well because I've always listened to it. Um, so I like listening to a lot of podcasts. But I suppose what that, what that probably does is it tells us, well, um, this information age that we're in, there's so much digital content out there, whether it's um, audio books, articles, blogs, podcasts, little online courses that you get through things like LinkedIn and, and other sort of subscription-based um, uh, uh, learning uh, 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 vehicles so yeah i think and, and obviously we've got webinars as well through um iiba iiba uk and, and stuff like that and I, I, I volunteer for iiba uk so really really sort of great and uh, mm. great thing that we've seen a lot more of in the last 18 months or so since we've been a lot more remote in a lot more webinars and a lot more people that are engaged in um, virtual learning yeah yeah without that yeah, um if we'd have had the same situation that we've got with the pandemic, but maybe before we had all of this accessibility, mm. I think we'd, we'd, we'd be missing something here. And, and Sam, I hope, I hope you don't mind me me asking. Um, I understand you're currently applying for the Expert BA Manager Forum Award. Um, what's motivated you to, to, to aim for that and to, to go for that as an award? Yeah, so um, thanks, thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, applying. So hopefully, hopefully now um, it, it, it can be it can be successful. But um, yeah, for me, the motivation around learning comes from um, that the, the gain that I get in other people succeed. Um, so as I said, you know, I, I, I initially um, liked learning, and I tried to share in order to make sure I'd understood it. But then I think the reward for me comes from seeing other people make the most of, of, of the learning that I share. And then, so I guess I'm kind of keen to make sure that I'm being the best that I can be and inspiring others to try and be the best that they can be and to learn as much as they can. So for me, the expert BA um, is about me trying to stretch myself and see where, where I can uh, I can get to and, and hopefully try and inspire others to put themselves through the same process mm. and get that self-learning as well. And it really is inspiring um, because you, you'd completed the business analysis diploma and then the advanced international business analysis diploma now you, you're pushing on to get that BA manager forum award and and it's it's certainly for the BCS qualification schema it's the highest level of award that you can get but at the same time you're preparing a conference talk for the European conference later this year and it's kind of where do you find the time Sam? I, I, I don't know I don't know where I find the time um I think I must have Bernard's watch uh, to reference an old uh, an old program but um but I think yeah, it. I think it, it kind of comes from um, just wanting to, to to do as much as I can. So um, yeah, I'm really excited about the conference talk. Actually, I know my kids do. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but and and, and Ian, uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, um, hopefully, he'll like like this if he hears a podcast. Should we wave to Ian? Hi, Ian. Hi, Ian. Hi, Ian. <laughs> Thanks for talking about my my uh, um, my my. Uh, presentation in advance so hopefully it's going to be as good as you hope it is what, what's um, the title of the talk sam yes yeah, so it's called uh, benefits uh, now you see them now you don't you're where the wizard of was 
<laughs> a, a, a long title, but it's about um, it's about um, benefits and how they can be um, not quite what you expect. Um, so being able to, through good analysis, help to uh, find out what's really behind the curtain, hence the, the Wizard of Was and Brilliant. The analogy. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And very creative as well. And it's all illustrated by Sam as well. So he's, he's learned about uh, illustrations rather than just using the, uh, the standard PowerPoint text and images. Wow. Wow. Well, I, I'm inspired. Um, what I'd like to do is say thank you to everyone that's listening today and um, watched it, watched us as well. Um, a huge thank you to Sam for joining us on today's pod. Um, if you've got any ideas for future episodes or if you'd like to appear as a guest, um, please do contact us. It's babrew at syskd.com. Thank you.